Hi everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca with another car review for your growing family. And I want to start off this week with a bit of an astronomical concept. You've probably heard of the Goldilocks theory before, where astronomers are looking for planets that aren't too hot, aren't too cold, they're just right, and it means that they can sustain life really nicely. And I think that this is where the subcompact crossover segment has done really well, because it's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right for young families that aren't looking for the size of a more traditional size SUV. And when the Subaru Crosstrek was released back in 2013, it really struck a chord with a whole new segment of Subaru buyers because it's not as big as an Outback or a Forester, but it still gives you all of that outdoorsy kind of rugged design with a bit of off-road capability, standard all-wheel drive, but it's a bit smaller, gives you better fuel efficiency and a bit better for driving around in the urban environment. Now the Crosstrek has been redesigned completely for 2018. We're now in the second generation of this vehicle. It looks looks fairly similar, it's just been kind of stepped forward a little bit, and it's a little bit bigger, not much, but all of that extra space has been piled into the second row. I want to see how it performs with this brand new global design platform that we saw on the Impreza last year and is now being introduced into the Crosstrek. Apparently it should make it a much sportier ride, so let's hop on board and see how this new Crosstrek stacks up this week here on Family Wheels. You know, in a world of ballooning prices, inflation, it's a rare treat to actually see something get cheaper when it's been redesigned. And that's exactly the case here with the Crosstrek for 2018. Because up here in Canada, there's what's being called the convenience trim introduced. And it's deleting things like heated front row seats, uh, fog lights, a leather wrapped steering wheel, but it also actually brings the base price down by $1,300. Now I have seen other vehicles get cheaper before in their new generation but generally it's when production gets moved from somewhere like Japan or Europe and moved down to a cheaper place to make cars like Mexico. But that's not the case here in the Crosstrek. It's still being made in Japan. And despite that base price coming down to just over $23,500 up here in Canada, we're getting some additional standard features that users were really asking for out of the Crosstrek. Things like a six and a half inch infotainment system with a far easier to use infotainment system interface we're also getting Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. That's a big deal for a lot of people who are shopping around for a car these days, getting that smartphone integration. We have 17-inch alloy wheels. We have a rear backup camera now as standard. Nice clarity out of that backup camera too. And then of course, unlike many of its competitors, things like the Jeep Renegade or the Honda HRV, you're getting all-wheel drive as standard on all trims of this vehicle. And that's a real selling point up here in Canada when you're dealing with those Canadian winters and even at that cheaper base convenience trim price you're getting one of the best all-wheel drive systems out there on this car. Now here in our test vehicle, we're in the top of the line limited trim with the EyeSight package, which comes in at just over $33,000 up here in Canada. And again, there are a couple of things that are unique to the Canadian market in these higher level trims, including dual zone climate control and a heated steering wheel. Those are some things that Canadian consumers were really asking for. Now speaking of this steering wheel, on all but that convenience trim, that base trim, you're getting a leather wrap steering wheel. And it looks really cool because it's got this orange stitching in it. Very contemporary looking but unfortunately as soon as you put your hands on it it's got a very cheap feel the leather feels more like a faux leather almost sort of like a plastic product and it cheapens the overall sort of driver experience of this car now speaking of things that look cool the seats especially here in this top tier with this two-tone leather I think look really slick but when you go to get into them they're kind of middle of the road in terms of comfort they're acceptable but they're not exceptional unfortunately the headrests feel like I'm putting my head onto a 2x4. They're super firm. And then a couple of other issues that I have, even on the top, top tier trim, while the driver's seat is motorized, the passenger seat on the right-hand side here is not. Another issue, there's no lumbar support adjustment. So if you've got a small of the back that you like to tune in just so for yourself, not an option here on the Crosstrek. And that brings me to the interior in general here on the Crosstrek. It is a huge improvement over the previous generation of this car. Nice stitching in the dashboard, lots of soft touch surfaces, 
but there's a bit of a mishmash, kind of a hodgepodge, a potpourri of switchware that's been slapped into this thing. The switchware in the doors and on the steering wheel feels really contemporary, almost European. But then if we look at the infotainment system, it has an entirely different kind of switchware. And then way down here where we would control the heated seats, this looks like something that's been pulled out of an early 2000s era Subaru. So it seems just a little bit helter-skelter, like Subaru kind of pulled some of their switches out of the parts bin rather than finding something that was a bit more uniform here in the cabin. Now the other issue that I have with the interior on the Crosstrek is road noise and while Subarus have never been known for particularly quiet cabins I thought that maybe since this was on a brand new platform for 2018 it would be a little bit quieter. But that's not really the case here. We're at 68 decibels as our average with our decibel reader here this week and that's certainly on the noisier end. If that's something that bothers you you're going to find a quieter cabin in the Honda HRV or the Toyota CHR. Now, let's get to how this thing drives because we brought a bunch of new tech on board, including two brand new transmissions. First up, we've got a six-speed, not a five-speed manual transmission. Now we say goodbye to that five-speed, which is gonna help improve your fuel economy at highway speed, keep those revs down. And then we also have this continuously variable transmission like we've got in our tester here this week. Now this CVT's gotten lighter for 2018. It's also gotten sportier, a little bit peppier, brings the car to life a little bit more. We have the option of these paddle shifters for playing around in the corners a little bit on the higher level trims. And we also have better fuel economy out of this transmission. Transmission. We've averaged this week 7.9 liters per 100 kilometers. That's a pretty solid mix between highway and city driving. That's pretty impressive for a car that has full-time all-wheel drive. Subaru really does have one of the better continuously variable transmissions on the market. Although I do find that under steady acceleration, not even when you're really pinning it off the line, that the engine revs do tend to go up and stay up for a little bit longer than you'd see in a traditional automatic transmission. But once you do get this car up to any kind of a decent speed, those revs come down and it feels far more like an automatic transmission would. Also brand new for 2018, models with this CVT on board are given X mode. Now we've seen this in the Forester for a while now. Essentially you press this button when you get yourself into nasty, snowy, icy, muddy, sandy conditions. You have to drive under about 40 kilometers an hour for it to work, but it's going to improve your traction. It's going to help this vehicle become far more off-road capable. Cool to see that here on the Crosstrek now for 2018. Because this car does have a surprising amount of off-road capability. It actually has exactly the same amount of ground clearance as we'd see in the Forester or the Outback. 220 millimeters of it. And when we compare this to the Impreza, which I was driving around this past winter, that was one of my big beefs with that car. I was driving it around in some fairly deep snow. It was kind of mashed potato-y. And I found that I was bottoming out a fair bit in that car. You're not going to have that problem here in the Crosstrek. Now you only have one engine available to you in the Crosstrek. It's a two liter, four cylinder, non-turbo engine. It puts out 152 horsepower, which is four more horsepower than we saw in the previous generation of this car. But to be honest, it's not exactly a sports car. It doesn't have a lot of pep. It's certainly gonna be more than enough for you to get around the city comfortably. My wife's really enjoyed driving this car this week, but if you're a real driving enthusiast, don't expect to get in this thing and have it blow your socks off. That said, I think that the six-speed manual transmission in this car would make it a bit more interesting to drive, pull it off the page just a little bit more, and that's the way that I would go if I was buying this car. Better yet, if Subaru put that two-liter turbocharged engine like we see in the Forester XT here into the Crosstrek, I think that would be a super fun combination because this is a smaller car, this is a lighter car, and man, that would be one winning combination. Now in terms of cornering with this thing, it is far better than the previous generation of the Crosstrek. It feels so much more connected, and that's almost exclusively because of this new global platform from Subaru. It's 70% stiffer than the outgoing version. It's also got a lower center of gravity. So despite that SUV-like ground clearance, cornering feel is excellent, the steering is excellent, and we also have some really well-tuned suspension that doesn't feel too harsh, but not mushy either. This new platform is 
also really improve the safety on the cross track. If you do happen to get yourself into an accident, there's a 40% improvement in energy absorption in this car. So it's going to take an impact a lot better. And if you want to avoid getting into an accident in the first place, you also have the option in the cross track of getting the EyeSight package in the top two level trims of this car, the Sport and the Limited trims. That's giving you things like adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision mitigation braking, and also new for 2018, rear cross traffic alert. So if you're backing out, the vehicle senses that there's a car crossing your path, it's going to tell you, it's going to send off an alarm so you don't go crashing into them. I really do think it's one of the best safety systems out there. Even when you compare it to much more expensive brands like Mercedes and BMW, it's really smooth, really slick. Now, speaking of safety systems on this car, the Crosstrek was just tested this new 2018 by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The results were just put out this past week and it got a top safety pick plus rating. That's the very best you can get from that organization. So it should, you know, put your mind at ease when you're putting your kids into this thing. Now, speaking of kids let's check out the back seat and see if that extra space that they've given the second row really does make a big improvement for this car because I think that was a big Achilles heel in the cross track in the previous generation you know, when I first saw the numbers for the Crosstrek, I saw that the wheelbase was just 30 millimeters longer for 2018. I thought, yeah, I'm not really sure if the second row is really going to be that different, but it really is. It is so much more livable here for 2018. I've set my driver's seat for someone who's six foot two. That's my height. And I'm sitting back here as a six foot two tall guy, and I'm actually pretty comfortable. I've got enough legroom, and I've got enough headroom too. This car actually has just about an inch less legroom than the Forester now does, which means that it's a far more usable second row. Unfortunately, that doesn't translate over to rear-facing car seat. I've flipped our kind of average size convertible car seat around, so it's now in rear-facing position, and from the back of the front seat cushion up to the glove box, we're looking at about 27 inches of legroom, which isn't going to give you much space. It's going to feel pretty cramped if you're a tall person. However, if we've got car seats in regular front-facing mode, your kids are a little bit older, or maybe they're already in booster seats or don't even need a booster seat at all, they're going to feel really comfortable back here. This is a huge improvement over the first generation of the Crosstrek, and if we do compare this to its direct competitors, the likes of that Toyota CHR that we were in last week, way more room here in the Crosstrek than the CHR, slightly more room here in the Crosstrek than we see in the Jeep Renegade, but even still, even with this extra space, the Honda HRV still coming out on top, it's got a very spacious second row and the benefit of that magic seat system where you can flip those second row seats up and have all kinds of different cargo configurations with a nice flat floor. One thing that's nice, speaking of flat loads here in this vehicle, is that you can flip these second row seats down and you do have a perfectly flat load floor. And that's gonna help a lot if you wanna throw a mountain bike in here or something like that. But one thing I wasn't so thrilled about, especially since this vehicle is targeted at more sort of outdoorsy people, is that we only have a 40-60 split. We don't have a 40-20-40 split. So if you've got a pair of skis that you wanna throw back here into that second row area, you have to give up one of your prime second row passenger seats, at least one of them, maybe even two, because we can't throw a pair of skis down the middle and still keep those two passenger seats on either side of them. But if we look at the trunk in this vehicle in general, it has gotten bigger for 2018. The previous generation of this car had a 588 liter trunk capacity. Now you can put 632 liters of stuff behind the second row in this car. And also we've got a larger opening when it comes to the trunk. So once you flip open that back door, bigger items can get thrown in here a bit more easily. Now speaking of big items, if you've got something that's really tall or say a big dog, we don't have a sloped off back window like we see in some of the other competitors to the cross trek. It's a bit more sort of a typical wagon kind of look, which means that big, family dogs aren't going to feel all scrunched in. It's actually pretty comfortable for our big pooch back there. If you do want to have a ski box on this thing for extra capacity, there are already roof rails that come standard on this vehicle, mounted and ready to go. Also, the Crosstrek has a 1,500 pound towing capacity, which isn't a lot of weight, but if you did want to throw a you know utility trailer behind this thing, if you're going off on a camping trip and you wanted that extra capability, that extra capacity to throw a bunch of camping gear into a trailer, then you can do that in this car too. That gives you a little bit more versatility. You know, I think the second generation Subaru Crosstrek just ticks so many of the boxes that people are looking for when they're shopping around for a subcompact crossover. It's a car that could work for a lot of different people. And going back to that Goldilocks theory, despite its size, it's very livable. And 
it makes me kind of want one. So it should be no surprise that the Subaru Crosstrek has actually been the best-selling vehicle in the Subaru lineup since it was launched earlier this year. People are gobbling this thing up here in Canada. Now next week, the next time I see you, we're sticking with this subcompact crossover segment and we're going to be in another vehicle that's a serious competitor to this one. It's the Mazda CX-3. I'm really curious to see how that car compares to this one because they're two vehicles that a lot of people cross shop with one another. So make sure to check that out in a week from now. Until then, leave a comment below, subscribe while you're at it, and we'll see you in seven days.